Over the past few weeks, I've been covering many different characters in Jujutsu Kaisen with varying amounts of potential, ranging from grade 1 sorcerers like Kento Nanami to special grade sorcerers like Tsuguru Geto, all in the hopes of figuring out exactly how strong they could be at their full potential. In this video, I'll be doing the same thing with Mahito, assessing his curse technique, level of talent, mindset, and overall room for growth, all in order to give you a good idea as to what his ceiling would be if he weren't defeated in Shibuya. Up to this point in the series, I have covered characters with amazing potential like Geto and Jogo, however, Mahito is simply a cut above the rest. So not only will I be explaining why he had so much room for growth, but by the end of all of this, I hope to make it clear why he would be the strongest character in Jujutsu Kaisen, surpassing both Gojo Satoru and Ryomen Tsukuna. Now, saying that someone could become stronger than Gojo and Tsukuna is quite the claim, and as such, it requires an extraordinary amount of evidence to back up. So before we get into what Maito can do and how he would do it, let's first discuss why I'm so confident in his abilities and potential ceiling in the first place. For starters, Idol Transfiguration is a ridiculously powerful curse technique in its own right, so much so that when not accounting for the user, I'd argue that it's a top three ability in the series. Yuta's ability to copy curse techniques Techniques is the only ability in Jujutsu Kaisen that I'd say is objectively better than Idol Transfiguration, if only because it can also absorb that technique, but you can technically also make an argument for the completed version of the Limitless and Ten Shadows to also be in that same tier. Regardless, Idol Transfiguration is one of the best techniques in the entire series and provides Maito with enough versatility and developmental potential to be top one in the verse. Much like Satoru Gojo, Maito is essentially invulnerable to all forms of attack as a majority of the Jujutsu Kaisen universe lacks the ability to perceive and attack the soul. Yuji, Nobara, and Tsukuna are the only characters in the story who have proven themselves capable of harming Maito's soul, and this in itself is a huge asset. On top of this, Idol Transfiguration also allows almost unparalleled amounts of creativity and versatility in its usage, which we'll be discussing in painstaking detail later in this video. For now, all you need to know is that Maito has a curse technique worthy of being the strongest. In terms of talent and potential, it's obvious that he stands with the best of the best, as he was not only able to replicate Gojo's 0.2 second domain expansion after seeing it once, but Nanami views Maito's full potential as something that sorcerers in general should fear. To further substantiate this, Maito's potential is flat out stated to be significantly higher than that of Jogo's, who is stated by Sukuna to have the capacity to reach the heights of Satoru Gojo. By all accounts, this means that Maito has the basic foundation that would allow him to not only rival Gojo in the aspect of sorcery, Sorcery, but flat out surpass him and leave him in the dust if given time and the proper amount of guidance. Pair his curse technique and innate talent with an experimental and selfish mindset very similar to that of Tsukuna's, and you have the perfect mixture of traits that can lead to a genuinely terrifying force for evil. Many times in videos like these, I have to tweak a character's mentality or desires, but in Mayuto's case, all that he needs is to be removed from the crappy circumstances that Ghetto's manipulation got him in, and my controller to put his skills to use. There are tons of different paths that one could go down when exploring Maito's full capabilities, many of which I'll cover in this video, but the first thing I'd start leveling up if I was playing the Mahito video game is his transfiguration, more specifically, the manipulation of souls other than his own. In Shibuya, we see Maito have many inspired moments when it came to the warping of souls. Soul multiplicity, polymorphic soul isomer, body repel, and delayed transfiguration are all very useful extensions of his original curse technique, and they prove that he could take the basic manipulation of the human spirit extremely far. I mean, so far, all of Maito's control transfigure humans have come from basic people, souls that don't have a knack for sorcery, souls that aren't particularly strong, the lowest of the low and the weakest of the weak. This is all well and good when trying to amass a large quantity of foot soldiers as Maito has, but having a few strong generals amongst them could take his fighting prowess to the next level. Like, let's say Maito decided that he wanted to start storing some more powerful creatures for himself. What if he started hunting sorcerers or even fellow cursed spirits in order to manipulate their souls? What if he decided to not just kill sorcerers using this technique, but store them for later? Based on his conversation with Hanami, we know that cursed spirits aside from him also have souls, and his ability to transfigure Nobara and Nanami proves that his technique can work on sorcerers to an extent. In fact, we see him turn Junpei into a transfigured human after he awakened the curse technique, letting us know without a shadow of a doubt that Maito is in fact capable of viewing the souls of cursed spirits and manipulating the souls 
of sorcerers. Now in the early stages of his development, it's likely that he wasn't able to maintain any of Junpei's sorcerer-like abilities, but with more time to refine his curse technique and the ability to combine multiple souls to strengthen the bond of the body, I see no reason Mahito wouldn't be able to forcefully hijack a sorcerer through soul manipulation and store them as a specialized transfigured human to use in battle. By expending an extremely large amount of regular human souls to sustain and energize the one human with the ability to use curse techniques, Mahito would be able to pull off what is essentially the sorcerer version of cursed spirit manipulation. Much like Ghetto, Mahito would be able to hunt down his prey and meticulously build an army of transfigured sorcerers that are far beyond the level of your run-of-the-mill human. Even by just combining a bunch of regular people's souls, Mahito was able to construct a creature strong enough to damage Toto and send him flying. So imagine how powerful a transfigured human would be if instead of Billy from down the street, you had Kento Nanami as the base component. Not only would their physical might be completely incomparable to what it was before, but they would also possess curse techniques that Mahito would be able to direct and control at will. Due to the nature of his technique and the souls of curses, I even believe that he would be able to do this with his fellow cursed brethren, wielding the souls of non-sorcerers, sorcerers, and cursed spirits all at the same time. Just imagine for a second, if instead of killing Nobara, were killing Nanami. Maito combined their souls with the souls of other non-sorcerers in order to wield them as puppets of his destruction, moving only for the sake of his malice. A transfigured grade one and transfigured grade two, both wielding curse techniques, would be really broken, and Maito could just keep collecting sorcerers like them for as long as he wanted. If he was really greedy, he could also attempt to combine the souls of curses and humans to create a monstrously powerful combination. Esso, Kejizu, and Shoso's existence lets us know that the combination of cursed spirit and human is possible, and with Choso specifically, we know that it creates a very strong combatant. Just by simply changing who he targets, Maito could create armies of stored souls that even rivals what Ghetto could collect with his own curse technique. Now, I've already talked about adding Nanami and Nobara to his army, but let's take this one step further. Considering the fact that Maito was even able to realize his full potential, in this specific scenario, I'm assuming that he comes out victorious against Yuji and Toto, incapacitating Itadori for Sukuna to revive later, and getting a great idea to turn the top-notch gorilla into his strongest soldier. If you thought having Nanami as a deployable fighter was bad, just wait till Toto joins the party and starts using Boogie Woogie to help Maito instead of hindering him. And Working backwards from that, Maito could start collecting the bodies and souls of any stragglers left in Shibuya. The basic humans left immobilized by Gojo's domain would be easy pickings and just right up canon Maito's alley, but even unconscious curse users like Awasaka or characters on the fringe of Shibuya like Yaga, Ino, and even Shoka would be ripe for Maito to consume and transfigure. If you give this guy a little patience too, he'll get a special delivery of sorcerers thanks to a little train ride and get characters with curse techniques like tool manipulation, creation, blood manipulation, and a pretty useful support technique all without breaking too much of a sweat. Combing over the entire battlefield could also lead him to coming across characters like Panda and Kusakabe, who would make very nice additions to his army. And while I could continue going down this path of explaining each and every character that he adds to his arsenal, I think you get the point. Maito essentially becomes a sorcerer curse spirit manipulator. Just as someone like Yuta has room for limitless growth because of his ability to copy curse techniques endlessly, or Geto's nigh infinite potential because of his own curse spirit manipulation, the boundaries of Maito's capability span further than the universe itself simply because he was blessed with a powerful technique. And he also has me to make sure he's directing it in the right way. On top of just gaining more allies, very strong and competent allies that he could deploy in battle, his inquisitive nature would also prompt him to explore the abilities of whatever sorcerer he transfigures, at least if they have a unique technique or interesting application of cursed energy. Kusakabe's many different forms of simple domain, for example, could certainly pique Maito's interest, especially considering how potent it was against him in a fight, and he could even gain access to his know-how of that 
that technique by bringing him into the fold. Panda's ability to split himself into three separate forms or cores could also be a useful skill for Marito to pick up in the event he's ever fighting someone like Itadori again. Marito specifically could concentrate large portions of his soul in a specific part of his body just like Panda, with the upside of essentially giving himself the ability to come back from what would be a usually lethal blow. For example, the attack that finished him in the cannon, the final black flash from Yuji, would potentially only kill Mahito once, simply moving one third of his soul away. Bits and pieces of sorcery that he previously didn't have access to, slowly but surely being drip fed to him as I'm illustrating here, just makes a monster of a cursed spirit and we're only just getting started. What's interesting about Idol Transfiguration here is that he would also be able to essentially remove many of the limitations that the sorcerers innately have. Kamo's inability to spam blood manipulation because he will run out of blood, well that can probably be taken care of by not being a normal human and constantly being fed cursed energy from a special grade level curse. Momo having a very low level application of cursed tool manipulation, only really using a broom as her main attacking choice. That could probably be bypassed by being part of Maito's cursed energy network and probably just being able to have a lot more output in general. Mai only being able to create one bullet a day with her creation curse technique probably would be able to be bypassed by Maito transfiguring her entire body and brain and giving it a higher capacity for sorcery. We've already seen him bypass heavenly restrictions. Based on what we know, there's no reason he wouldn't be able to amplify these sorcerers to this degree. On top of doing all of this, he could take inspiration from Jogo and Dagon if he wanted and start crafting his transfigured humans and curses for specific purposes. Giant kaiju-like monsters reminiscent of Dagon's strongest Shikigami. An aerial specialist like Jogo's Ember Insects would be more than possible and once again leans into the overwhelming versatility and complexity of Maito's fighting style and curse technique. As you've seen, especially in the anime version of Yuji and Toto versus Mahito, diversity and large scale attacks could really open up the doors for Mahito's ability to take down sorcerers and strong ones at that really quickly. As soon as you figured out how to deal with fighting a dozen normal human souls, he could drop a transfigured blood manipulator on you. If you're strong enough to deal with that, boom, a transfigured grasshopper curse has some hands to throw. If you beat that, bang, you get squashed by a collection of souls the size of a building. All of this while being pressed by Mahito physically, being unable to harm him, and having to avoid his palms. When you consider all of these things, you realize that you have a very, very intimidating opponent on your hands, or rather an even more intimidating version of a villain that was already very difficult to put down. The anime has shown other usages of his technique, like Mahito shooting off transfigured humans like gunfire, and I think that's a spectacular way to add pressure to any opponent or simply mow down weak enemies that come in droves. Using Mahito's canon skill of delaying a soul's distortion, he could also replicate Choso's supernova in terms of effect, and we actually do see him do something like this when facing off against Gojo in the beginning of the arc. Now I know with just this, I'm already really stretching Mahito's technique to its limit, at least when it comes to manipulating souls that aren't his, but we do know that even when not talking about regular humans, sorcerers, or cursed spirits, there is one more target for his technique. In the manga, it's made rather clear by the narrator that many different things in JJK have souls, including inanimate objects. And if these objects have souls that can be observed, I honestly see no reason why Mahito wouldn't be able to observe and manipulate them himself. What could hold back this theory somewhat is the fact that these inanimate objects possess no cursed energy, and we've never seen Maito even attempt to warp something or someone that possesses none of the series' power system. We know that domain expansions don't do this for the most part, so it's possible that techniques don't either. However, not only could this be bypassed via Maito's own interpretation of his curse technique, which we know is a large part of informing its limitations, but Tsukuna's ability to target things with no cursed energy, specifically with his slashing attacks, backs this idea up pretty objectively. This may not seem impressive at first, but once again, this adds just another layer of dimensionality to Mahito's bag. If he's ever out of humans or cursed souls to manipulate, he doesn't need to worry because he can simply place his palms on the ground or surrounding environment to start making constructs or autonomous beings to fight for him. In the unlikely event he ever comes across another sorcerer that is a hard counter to the soul, he'd use the manipulation of inanimate objects to allow him to fight at range, while also not risking death by making himself a larger target. 
Much like Dondanon's malleable house or the war devil's ability to turn things into weapons, Mahito would immediately be able to change the landscape with just a simple touch. Shifting walls and buildings to protect himself while also using it to disorient an opponent and attack them is just up Mahito's alley for a fighting style, and I could even see it being his own personal counter to a character like Toto who targets things with cursed energy. Unlike the souls of living beings, objects with no cursed energy wouldn't be targeted by this kind of onslaught. Within the canon of the story, one of the biggest reasons that Mahito isn't viewed in the same overwhelmingly powerful light as someone like Jogo is because of the lack of ranged attacks or violently destructive uses of his curse technique. And while he's always been someone that's excelled up close, all of the applications of his technique listed so far would make him a problem for a majority of the verse outright. If you're in close range, you have to worry about being touched by his palms or nailed by whatever weaponry comes to his mind. Due to his ability to stretch and morph, he can also attack you in mid-range, and anything further than that can be taken care of by his transfigured humans, sorcerers, and cursed spirits. And to top it all off, if he's facing a particularly special opponent, one that could only be overwhelmed through a series of large-scale attacks, Dagon-inspired transfigured kaiju, and literal environmental reconstruction could certainly do the trick. And while we're at it, I mean, We've seen Maito change his own size, right? Sure, I've been focusing on Maito transfiguring other souls, but Maito can also grow and shrink himself. If you thought Jogo grabbing buildings with lava hands was wild, just wait till Maito does it with his own hands or has Japan itself gaining life to form a Megazord-like creature and attack a singular opponent. One question that definitely is valid to ask in this case, though, is whether or not Maito has the cursed energy levels to sustain such high-octane battles. I'm giving him a whole lot of options in terms of technique applications, but can he actually handle generating all of that cursed energy to use his curse technique that much on such a wide scale? And the simple answer to that question is yes. Generally speaking, the disaster curse spirits have so much cursed energy that it's kind of ridiculous. The only characters in the series that we can say with certainty have more is Sukuna and maybe Yuda. You can make an argument for Gojo as well, but much of his stamina is contributed to by his efficiency rather than volume. Jogo is compared in cursed energy levels to that of eight to nine fingers of Sukuna. Nanami views Dagon as a curse with endless HP because of its cursed energy. Jogo is viewed as levels above Dagon in this department, and it's made pretty clear when we see how much cursed energy Jogo was able to expend in his fight with Sukuna. While still having enough left in the tank for a domain expansion that he is indeed a cut above the rest. Due to all of the disaster curses perspective on Maito and the fact that he originates from a negative emotion even greater than all of his brethren, it's safe to say that Maito's cursed energy levels are ridiculous. And if that wasn't enough, we know that in the beginning of Shibuya, Maito spammed his technique over 1,000 times to create transfigured humans, all of which were taken out by Gojo. And then Maito proceeds to fight Yuji, Nobara, and Toto before opening a domain expansion and awakening a new form. Toto adds to the credibility of Maito's reserves by mentioning how overwhelming they are after Maito has used his technique or cursed energy to enhance himself thousands of times in one night. To put it into perspective, there are only two characters that immediately come to mind when I consider usage of a technique in the thousands. One is Gojo, and that's because he's constantly applying the Limitless to himself. And he stated to essentially never be able to run out of stamina. And the second character is Sukuna, a character with cursed energy manipulation on Gojo's level and well over two times the amount of energy that Gojo has, as far as we know, having the largest pool in the entire series. Maito being up there in terms of cursed technique spamming and being able to actually fuel that while amplifying his own body really lets us know that his cursed energy levels are not anything to play about. With all of this information being present, I don't think it's crazy in any way to say that his cursed energy levels are off the charts. Combine this with the fact that his Black Flash feat guaranteed a huge boost in power, and Maito likely won't ever have to worry about the limits of his cursed energy ever again. If one Black Flash could make Yuji's own regular reserves unrecognizable, imagine what it could do for a cursed spirit that already had an absurd amount. Now, all of these abilities are powerful in their own way, and they're powerful in a way that's particularly hard to describe without amazing visuals, but this still isn't enough. 
We've seen Gojo and Sukuna be swarmed with large skill attacks and bombarded with many different levels of abilities, and that hasn't been enough to finish them. This incomplete version of Mayuto would likely only exist in the special grade sorcerer tier, being able to take on and potentially defeat characters like Ghetto, Yuki, Yuta, and Toji, but not being able to take that final step to becoming the strongest. Currently, what Mayuto lacks is the ability to contend with the likes of Sukuna and Gojo up close, as well as the domain refinement to clash with these two in a potential full-scale fight. We'll get to the domain portion of the video in a bit, but first we gotta talk about how we can improve Maito's physical capabilities. In Jujutsu Kaisen, there are a couple of ways to improve your physical stats. If you're a human being, you can improve them by trading your natural physicality and combining that with better cursed energy manipulation. In Maito's case, the more cursed energy he has and the better that he can use it, the stronger he will be in this area. Now, just due to Maito's ability to grow exponentially, as stated on the back of the 10th volume cover of the series, I'm sure that Maito would steadily grow in his cursed energy refinement and volume, but I'm not looking to make Maito marginally stronger here. I'm trying to maximize his stats all around, which means we're going to have to look at some more extreme methods, these being cursed technique usage and binding vows. Gojo and Naobito specifically are perfect examples of cursed technique applications, allowing someone to surpass the normal limitations of speed and strength. Naobito uses projection source he to surpass his limit and Gojo uses the limitless. Now you technically are able to achieve elite levels of physical prowess even with just basic cursed energy manipulation, as soon Sukuna has shown us, but he is also tied for having the best control over the power system in the verse, as well as having the most cursed energy in the entire series, and even then, Gojo could go beyond what Sukuna can when using his own curse technique. Because of this, it's safe to say that if we figure out a way to have Marito's technique boost his stats, even with less cursed energy and inferior control over it, he can obtain speed and strength on the level of Gojo and Sukuna. As mentioned earlier, on top of being able to use curse techniques to boost your stats, the other way to artificially boost your overall power is through binding vows. Mamie makes it clear that ones with your life in the balance often give the best outcomes, but even ones without that big of a stake work really well. Maito even employs this philosophy when using the instant spirit body of distorted killing, sacrificing malleability for durability, literally combining his technique and binding vows to become one of the most durable characters in the story. He's a great example of Maito using his own intelligence and intuition to get closer to the truer version of his soul and closer to the max potential potential that he has. Based on this information, there's no reason that Maito wouldn't be able to make alternate forms like this, but for different stats. Say he gave up his durability in exchange for heightened speed, reaction time, and agility. Becoming a glass cannon that's primary focus is to get in hits quick and transfigure their souls instead of attacking them physically. He's transformed his legs into that of an animal's in order to blitz Nanami, even in the earliest stages of his development. So I could see him taking on a super sleek form that allows him to shift to max speed in a matter of seconds. Taking into account that Maito's final cannon transformation gave him a 200% boost in toughness and probably some lesser buffs in the strength and speed category. It isn't at all wild to say that Maito in this new speed centric form would be blitzing characters who he was previously relative to. What's amazing about this binding vow as well is that Maito losing physical durability doesn't negatively affect his chances of winning 90% of the time. Only against characters like Yuji and Sukuna does his physical constitution really matter. Even when fighting someone as strong as Gojo, it wouldn't truly be that big of a problem if Maito's form is flimsy because he can't be harmed without his soul being affected, basically giving Maito a massive boost in speed for very little practical risk. On top of using his technique to transform his body and use binding vows to amplify it even further, Maito should have a pretty unique way to increase his overall stats, and that's by further strengthening the power of his soul. Typically in Jujutsu Kaisen, the soul isn't a considered factor in assessing a character's strength, but in Maito's case, he's able to see exactly what someone's soul looks like like and how it can be freed to release more power. And every example of the soul analysis leads to the idea that a strong soul directly correlates to a significant boost in abilities. In chapter 49, Maito directly tells Hanami that his soul is constrained by reason and their own stifled impulses. To prove this, Hanami starts indulging in those previously restricted impulses, enjoys the thrill of battle, and subsequently starts performing better in battle. The strength of one's soul is also mentioned when talking about Sukuna. In chapter 31, Maito flat 
Battle says that Jogo's cursed energy levels are more impressive, yet Tsukuna's soul is overwhelmingly stronger. This makes sense within the confines of the story, considering that Tsukuna is much less restricted in his thinking and actions than Jogo, and it also implies that a strong soul actually leads to a more potent increase in overall sorcery than a simple boost in cursed energy. Both massively can change the level of strength that we're dealing with, but in Maito's case, I'd argue that focusing his efforts on increasing his soul strength would do wonders. The extra proficiency in cursed energy manipulation, binding vowel implementations, and honing of that soul would all contribute to making him a monster even up close and personal. Even in the context of a pure physical confrontation, I'd argue that with all of the aforementioned buffs and boosts, even Gojo and Tsukuna would find him to be at least on their level. In addition to all of this, Maito awakening further and exploring the limits of his spirit would allow him to use idle transfiguration on Tsukuna, who he wasn't able to combat in the story specifically because of the difference in their soul potency. Now you may think it's far-fetched to argue that Tsukuna's soul could be matched by the likes of Maito, but everything in the story leads us to this conclusion. Not only does the patch face curse have a technique that gives him a closer relation to the soul than anyone else, but his attitude towards living is perfectly in line with Tsukuna's, meaning that it only needs time to mature and evolve evolve to eventually reach that level. His conversation with Yuji in the climax of their battle confirms this. If you take this at face value, Maito seems to be implying that not only ending Yuji will set him on a path for greater strength, but the ceiling for his growth that he would have access to is significantly higher than it was prior. Taking all of this information into account makes it pretty hard to deny that Maito's soul would continuously grow and evolve and make him a formidable cursed spirit that can even rival the king of curses. Even in just his base form, Maito should be competing physically physically with the likes of special grade sorcerers, and when you add his specialized combative forms, he's likely embarrassing some of the strongest characters in the series, like Yuta, Yuki, and Kenjaku. It may seem absurd to say, but think about it. How does someone like Yuta deal with a character who has ridiculous amounts of cursed energy, some of the best refinement in the entire series, a soul that rivals or even surpasses that of Tsukuna's, and oh yeah, a couple of forms that amp his stats by 200%. At this point, the only characters physically competing with Maito are Gojo and Tsukuna, and even they would be more relative to this version of Maito rather than low diffing him. Gojo would certainly still have the edge and speed because of his ability to spam teleportation, and the amount of cursed energy that Tsukuna has combined with his refinement might still give Maito quite a bit of trouble, but this curse has the tools to get around that. If he wants to make up for the speed and strength difference between him and the strongest sorcerers ever, he could simply add limbs to his form and artificially become a more difficult opponent to fight up close. I mean, Tsukuna has four arms and an extra mouth, and that's deemed as the perfect form for sorcery, but Maito could take this even further. Sure, if he wanted, he could replicate Tsukuna's four-armed form, but why stop there? Why not have six arms, or eight? Why not have two extra mouths, or three, or four? I mean, we've seen Maito transform into some wild stuff, so we know something like additional limbs is child's play for him. And if you've read the manga, you know what these additional extremities add. For all of those unaware, the reason that Tsukuna's form is considered to be so perfect for combat in the manga is because of his ability to constantly chant and sign for his technique without losing any breath or stopping the flow of combat. Cursed techniques and cursed energy output can be significantly increased by going through the entire signing and chanting process, also known as just the incantation. You can think of it as serving the same purpose as weaving hand signs in Naruto. And because of Gojo, we actually know that going through the full incantation of a technique allows its power to be boosted by 80% double the increase that Nanami gets with overtime, and quadruple the potential boost that one gets immediately after obtaining a black flash. Because of the malleability of Maito's body and his capacity to make clones, much like Tsukuna, he could constantly sign and chant to ramp his cursed energy output through the moon. Any gap between him and the two honored ones could be closed immediately by this method of increasing power. By this point, Maito has more diversity and options than anyone in the series, and he has the physical might to back that up when things get close too. Based on these facts alone, Maito is unambiguously top 3 in the verse. Anyone that isn't Gojo or Tsukuna is getting physically overwhelmed by Mahito's power and curse technique. With curse energy manipulation comparable to the strongest characters in the verse, reserves that are at least on par with Gojo's and a soul stronger than that of Tsukuna's, I don't think it's an exaggeration in the slightest to say that Mahito could step up to either of these two characters with supreme confidence, look them in the eye, and not have to worry, at least for the most part. Gojo 
Gojo in particular would be a pretty tricky opponent for Maito in the same way that Gojo is tricky for everyone, simply because Infinity makes damaging him with no domain expansion quite difficult, but the same thing rings true in reverse. Neither character would genuinely be able to hurt each other and would just be tossing out attacks up close and not being overwhelmed one way or the other. Sukuna versus Maito with no domains involved becomes quite interesting though, because both characters can actually harm and hit one another. Despite Sukuna having the weaker soul now, he still would have the capacity to harm Maito with his curse technique and likely resist basic forms of idle transfiguration to a pretty effective extent, basically forcing both characters to just duke it out. Four arms versus six, dismantle and cleave versus idle transfiguration. Due to the indiscriminate nature of Sukuna's slashing attacks, in terms of raw destructive ability at range, I still have him a decent bit above Mahito. Now, Mahito's ability to change the landscape, mess with Sukuna's soul, and summon up any transfigured sorcerers or cursed spirits allows for him to make up for this gap in raw strength with versatility and hacks. And very similarly to Ghetto, Maito would use his own technique and cursed energy to make his thralls stronger. In his ascent into becoming an honored one like Sukuna and Gojo, whatever special grade cursed spirits or sorcerers that he picked up along the way would be ready to fight for him and provide support in many different ways whenever Mahito needs it. And if you want a pretty good example of what these two going back and forth looks like, chapter 224 gives us a rather good example of what some of the strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen, just duking it out up close with no real complex curse technique usage or domain expansions look like. Relatively up close and in mid range would be where Maito and Sukuna have the least difference in skill, with long range attacks definitely being where Sukuna shines against Maito individually. Once random and animate objects start obstructing his view and transfigured Yuta and Yuki start aiding Maito to close the gap, I think it swings right back into Maito's favor. However, up to this point, the tables irreversibly turn the moment that Sukuna puts his hands together to paint on air. You see, the only reason I haven't officially placed him above Gojo and Sukuna yet is because I haven't mentioned his domain refinement much, but that is a much simpler ability to boost at this point in his development. Domain expansions and their ability to clash relies on three key components as far as we know. The first and least important thus far is compatibility. If two characters that are equal in every other capacity clash their domains and one has a fire-based technique while the other has a water-based one, at least based off of what we know in the series, the water-based domain should win or at least have the advantage because of this. In this specific case, Marito's domain doesn't really have bad compatibility with anyone we've seen in the story thus far. This leads us to the second factor, which is one based on cursed energy amount. This also shouldn't really be an issue for Marito considering that you can clash equally with an opponent who has way more cursed energy than you, as demonstrated in chapter 225 of the series. The final variable is the refinement of your domain, which is basically a vague way to encompass all skill and finesse with opening barriers and sure hit techniques. It's here where Maito in the canon story would face the biggest problems, but due to all of the growth that he's seen in this video, I honestly think that he would have the most broken domain expansion in the series hands down. Even before unleashing his full potential, he was skilled enough to replicate Gojo's point two domain, which is implied to be a last ditch effort made out of desperation on Satoru's part. And after viewing it once, Maito was able to replicate this feat. The hypothetical version of Maito I'm speaking about now is immeasurably more skilled with his curse technique and cursed energy than any version that existed within the story. So I don't think it's absurd in the slightest to say that he would be able to stand on even footing with these two sorcerers. What's also great about Maito's technique is that it's very much like Gojo's. What I mean is that it likely can't be countered by falling blossom emotion due to its complex nature and it also attacks you in a way that 99% of the series can't defend against in the first place. Gojo in fact surmises that his technique in the domain is significantly better than Sukuna's specifically because of this fact and Maito also has this domain trait. Rather than being able to survive this sure hit through sheer grit and tenacity like Jogo's, Dagon's, and even Sukuna's, Maito's domain landing would essentially be a guaranteed victory, very similarly to Unlimited Void. This is all well and good, but Maito achieves what I view to be the greatest and most diverse domain to date because he can combine the best traits of Gojo's and Sukuna's domain. I already mentioned the fact that Maito's sure hit technique is basically a win in itself, but now that Maito can use 
use idle transfiguration on inanimate objects that don't possess cursed energy he can intentionally change the domain target from beings with cursed energy to beings with souls which would include inanimate objects like Sukuna's domain does for all those missing the importance of this fact it basically means that anomalies like toji can be affected by maito's domain at this point too furthermore maito should be more than familiar enough shape-shifting to expand and shrink the barriers of his own domain to further increase the sure hits potency and reinforce the barriers externally normally a sorcerer's inability to reconcile the interior and exterior of their domain boundaries stops them from being able to do such a thing but if you have unique experience with shape-shifting and warping like maito does i'm sure making a barrier the size of a gumball while conceptualizing the inside being large enough to fit an entire fight isn't an issue at all he's enlarged himself and shrunk down plenty of times so doing so with a barrier probably wouldn't even strain him combine all of this with the ridiculous technique recovery time and you have a cursed spirit that can now step to gojo and sukuna and win if it still seems wild to say that let me remind you Mahito is now a cursed spirit that can deploy transfigured humans, sorcerers, and cursed spirits with the same ease that Ghetto does. He can spawn in massive kaiju-like transfigured creatures. He can manipulate the environment itself to make it fight for him. He can literally box equally with Gojo and Sukuna. He's invulnerable to every form of physical damage that can't also harm his soul, which means that Gojo just can't damage him. And he might have the best domain expansion in the entire series. Oh yeah, and Mahito canonically has technique recovery that is some of the quickest in the story. Immediately being cut down by Sukuna initially, Maito used his curse technique to expand and dissipate his body. Against Mekamaru, he's able to shapeshift just seconds after the barrier is dispelled, and in his final fight in Shibuya, all it takes is one punch from Maito's technique to fully regenerate his burned out curse technique. Even if Maito is facing off against sorcerers like Gojo and Sukuna in a prolonged showdown, he has the tools to compete consistently. Now, for the sake of brevity, I left out a few ideas I had when I was conceptualizing this video, but I'd really hate to let them go to waste, so just to name a couple more things that this version of Maito could do, essentially, he'd be able to drastically increase or decrease his physical form like Ant slash Giant Man, which I kind of mentioned earlier in the video, but on top of this, he'd be able to spawn clones of himself that are made specifically to take forms like Instant Spirit Body of Distorted Killing, consume multiple souls in order to regenerate his own, coat his body in a soul-like armor that comes from his transfigured humans, pick up on domain amplification from Jogo and Hanami, sense characters based on their soul rather than relying on pure cursed energy, and just generally make himself an overwhelmingly more physical character. Yeah. Full potential Maito is a really wild thing to think about, and because of this, I think it's safe to say that we dodged a bullet by not letting him continue to grow. Only God knows what we'll be able to take down this version of Maito at this point. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like this, check out this playlist where I go over a character's full potential. Let me know if you think Maito could have become the strongest down in the comment section, and subscribe for more videos like this. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.